I'm Scott Maurer, and you're listening to The Passive Investor Show. A lot of investors I partner with have one major challenge. They are busy professionals that love to create memories with their families, but are too busy to actively look and find value-add real estate that cash flows. Hey guys, I'm John Fortes, and I want to partner with you. I provide investment opportunities through apartment syndications that allow my partners to invest passively so they don't have to worry about trading more time for money. If you are interested in creating passive streams of income, wealth creation, and all the tax benefits that come along with investing through real estate, I encourage you to fill out the form at www.investwithfortes.com. Invest today so that tomorrow you can trade money for time. Once again, that's www.investwithfortes.com. And I can't wait to partner with you. Are you a busy professional looking to diversify your portfolio? Ever wanted to passively invest in real estate but don't know where to start? John Fortes provides you with a guide to passively invest in real estate. This is the Passive Investor Show. And now, the Passive Investor Show. Here's your host, John Fortes. Hello, PI listeners. Thank you for lending me your time today. Welcome to the Passive Investor Show. I'm John Fortes. Our goal is to provide you, the busy professional, with passive investing tips and tricks for your real estate investments to leverage more time for you to focus on your true passions. Let's get to work. Welcome, PI listeners, to the Passive Investor Show. I'm John Fortes. My goal and purpose of this show is to bring passive investors information to help them strategize, hoping to help them understand multifamily fund investing, no matter if it's their first time or they are a seasoned savvy investor. My guest today is Scott Maurer. Scott, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate you coming on. Tell us how you got here. Sure. Hey, John, appreciate you having me on. Um, I got here, I, I started with our, our company, uh, Advanta IRA, years ago. Uh, and I think you and I met uh, a few years ago being introduced uh, probably through Jake and Gino or someone like that. Uh, at one point, uh, our company is a self-directed IRA and, and 401k administrator. So that's, uh, I, I, got, I got started um, not knowing much about what, what we're going to talk about today and uh, have learned it certainly over the years. I got, I've been in the company, uh, been with the business since 2006. So uh, getting close to 14, 15 years now that I've been with the company. Um, haven't seen necessarily a lot of changes in some of the rules, but there have been, uh, the government does make tweaks here and there to the IRA and 401k rules. Uh, obviously, we deal more with self-directed assets, but uh, we can certainly touch on those today. Absolutely. My goal is to talk about the self-directed aspect, the checkbook control type of power of it. And um, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you learn about it? Because I know you said it. You, you mentioned it briefly. Yeah, yeah no, so I, um, I, uh, I'm an attorney by degree. Um, so I, I come out of law school um, and uh, looking for a job. Our owner here at Advanta IRA uh, is an attorney as well. And so he and I met uh, and I started with the company at that point. Again, knowing very little, um, you know, I knew what an IRA was. I knew what a, a, I had a 403B. I had been working for the city of Clearwater at one point. So uh, in the recreation department. So I knew kind of what their retirement plans out there. I guess you put them in stocks and, and bonds. And so self-directed was totally new to me. So when I you know, uh, met Jack, he brought me on board. I was the fourth person uh, hired at the company, fourth employee. We're up to um, oh, almost 30 now between our Tampa and our, our Atlanta offices. But yeah, I got started not really knowing much about it and being just kind of, I would, I would go listen to him give talks and presentations and and talking with clients, that's how I learned more about the investments, I would say, you know, hearing someone give a presentation on self-directed IRAs kind of only tells you what's possible, but it's been dealing with the people that I did uh, starting in 2006, all the way up, uh, even obviously through today, hearing what they're looking at investing in and walking them through the process. That's really where I learned a lot more about what we did, but I started from scratch, really not having a whole lot of knowledge in the business and just acquired it over the years. Oh, that's awesome. So, 
what brings a person to, uh, I guess, like roll over their account into a self-directed IRA? What, what, what are they looking for to do when they do that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the motivators I've seen over the years are are a few different ones, and sometimes they coincide. Um, but you'll have individuals who um, who are certainly just have they have an investment opportunity, so they 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 see a property down the street in their neighborhood that they want to buy. Um, somebody is doing a multifamily syndication. They somebody needs a private loan, and they're looking at their sources of capital and and find out either through. Uh, you know, one of our ads or here talking to their CPA that they could use their IRA, they could use their old 401k to actually take advantage of that investment opportunity. So for a lot of clients, it has been simply, I have an investment opportunity. This sounds really good. Um, my cash is, you know, most of my cash that I have to use is in an IRA account. And they discover that, hey, I, I actually can move this money out of the stock market to take advantage of, of that opportunity. So for a lot of people, that's, it's simply a, a new bag of money, a new, new source of capital that they can use. Uh, then there's another good chunk of people, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see some uh, once the market calms down a little bit. Um, people that just want to get some of their money out of the stock market, you know, investing in mutual funds and stocks um, makes them uneasy. Makes you know they they get upset at night, uh, even thinking about what might happen the next day in the stock market. Um, so they choose to at least use some or or some most of their portfolio to buy that rental property to invest in a syndication where they understand the investment a little bit more. Uh, and can control more about what that investment is gonna gonna return. So, uh, yeah, some people it's just hey, an, another bag of money I can use. Other people it's I would like to get some of my money out of the market and into something that I can control or that you know, I can count on for a return rather than you know see those ups and downs with things. I mean, no one you can control the the coronavirus or events in the Middle East, things like that that impact your four hundred one k. But you certainly could place that money with a friend or another investor who can give you a return to your account and not have to worry about what's going on in the world. Uh, thank you for, for mentioning that. I was going to say, if you're listening to this in the future, the current status or situation we're all going through is quarantine and during the, the COVID-19 situation right now. So uh, when he mentions the market and a bunch of people looking to get out, understand what is going on with the stock game at this time. So Thank you for, for touching on that. So when, when someone has that opportunity and they're looking for a company like yours to roll over or um, just basically place, move capital over into your company, how long does that transition take? Uh, it can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. So the process usually is the first step of, of deciding, hey, I want to use some of my retirement funds to invest in, in a real estate opportunity. The first step is to open an account with us. That The accounts are open in a day. Um, it's getting mon money transferred from your other brokerage firm, your other 401k. Um, that can take anywhere, again, it, from a few days to a few weeks. It just depends on who your other custodian is. Um, some of them work very quickly and will fax uh, we can fax a request, they'll wire money within two or three days. Um, other companies require, you know, insist on sending us a paper check. That's going to take a couple of weeks. So it is something if you're looking to make an investment, um, it can be a good idea to have the wheels in motion uh, as soon as possible on the IRA side. Because again, it can take, uh, depending on your custodian, a few weeks. Or just give me a call. I'll be happy to tell you based on who your custodian is, what kind of time frame uh, that you're looking at uh, up front. That's something we keep a good record of. Uh, the requirements and the time and the processing times of other custodians. But yeah, again, anywhere from, from a few days to a few weeks uh, to get the money moved. And there's our ways to speed up the process if need be with wires. So, um, but once we have the account up, the good thing is once the account is open, even while we're waiting for money to arrive, we can start working towards an investment purchase. So if you're investing in a syndication, we can start working on the subscription documents. Uh, if you're buying that property down the street in your neighborhood, we can start working towards a closing. Obviously we just can't, consummate and finalize the deal until the money arrives. That's awesome. So are there different type of accounts or plans or what are we, what are we looking at with that? Yeah. So with, with, in the, within the self-directed world, there are, you know, IRAs and 401ks basically that, that you can open. So their IRAs include your traditional uh, kind of your regular standard IRA account. There's the Roth IRA, the, the, the tax-free entity uh, and the SEP IRA uh, for people who are self-employed a SEP IRA gives them a larger contribution limit. So if you're looking at, you know, what amount, what monies could I self-direct? Um, any type of IRA would qualify. 
Uh, the difference is simply just how much you can contribute and some of the tax benefits that they offer. Um, the other account, though, that we offer, I think that we've seen a lot, a big growth in over the last few years, especially, um, is a solo 401k account. So for people who are self-employed, you own your own business, maybe you even have a side hustle, you have a regular nine to five job, but you have a side hustle, you can create your own solo 401k plan, uh, which again, gives you the ability to make larger contributions. Um, you can roll over your old 401ks, your I, some of your IRAs into that solo K plan. Um, and, and they're a little bit more flexible at times than the IRAs are. Um, and they have some definite other benefits. For instance, you can borrow from your 401k plan personally. You can take a loan from that plan. Uh, you cannot borrow from your own IRA account. So it's, again, one difference. Um, if you invest in leveraged assets, if you're investing into, a, say, a syndication deal, um, there's a, a little known tax called uh, UBIT tax that can apply to an IRA account that's invested into a, a leveraged real estate deal. That tax does not apply to the solo K. So um, again, self-directed accounts, it's any type of IRA. And again, we see, we're seeing a fair number and a lot of solo 401k plans as well. Again, as long as you have some kind of side hustle, or especially if you're self-employed and sole proprietor as it is, uh, you qualify for one of those accounts. And I think if, if, you, if you can qualify for a solo 401k, that's typically the way to go. Now, do you need to have an EIN number or can you be a sole prop? Uh, you, can, you can be a sole proprietor. You don't, have to have a set, you don't have to have a separate LLC or separate corporation set up. Um, so yeah, absolutely. That was for the solo. That was for the solo, just to make Correct. that clear. Yeah. Correct, uh, yeah. Uh, just so everybody's following along. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I wanted to touch on um, what are the benefits of what are the other benefits? Because we touched on real estate. What else could you use that to invest with? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things we're always geared. Um, it seems like I always default to talking about real estate because probably 75% of the investments that we hold on behalf of our clients are real estate related. So it's anything from a single family home to a condo. Um, whether you're doing those for long or short term rentals or rehabs, that, all, that is all possible. Uh, we do see a lot of private loans. Um, you know, my IRA could, for instance, lend to you on a real estate deal and you could give me a note and a mortgage back. Um, so there are a lot of, and, and certainly the, like I said, the multifamily syndications, we've seen a, a big growth in those over the last few years as well, uh, more, much more passive investment. So 80% of what we see is real estate related, uh, tax liens, um, you know, uh, um, you know uh, assignments, uh, wholesale deals you can do inside the IRA. Outside of the real estate world, we do see um, people invest in like private hedge funds. Uh, I did a number of accounts this year for a guy who was starting his own private hedge fund and had people using their IRAs to, to invest in there. Uh, you can buy gold, physical gold and silver. Um, you know, a lot of startup companies, uh, someone's looking to raise capital just for their new business idea. Your IRA can, can join in there. So uh, the only things you can't buy are life insurance and collectibles. So sometimes that's the way to, to define what's possible within an IRA or 401k is you simply, you can't buy life insurance or collectibles uh, and you can't buy an asset or investment that you intend to use personally. So when you talk about the real estate, uh, uh, real estate realm, you gotta be buying a property that you're using for investment purposes only. It can't be a second home or vacation home. But I mean, the opportunities really are endless. Um, I've seen some interesting things over the years, seen people invest in movie projects. Um, I saw someone buy a mausoleum crypt inside their IRA account. Uh, mausoleum crypts come with titles and he bought it as an investment uh, to then sell. You know, figured I got a good deal on this one. I can sell this crypt space to somebody else in the future. Uh, I'm not sure how you find those, but he did and he took advantage of it in the IRA account. Um, so yeah, again, it, we've, it's, again, most of what we see is real estate and, and, and you know, private placements and things like that, but there's certainly a lot of other things you can do. So you're telling me I can't go buy the Michael Jordan rookie card? <laughs> you cannot because it's a collectible. Um, yeah. So yeah, unfortunately not. I think it, maybe if you were buying a wholesale uh, couple boxes of baseball cards, I don't know, maybe you could, could make an argument that it's not a, but that specific card is definitely a collectible. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just figured I'd toss that in there. Scott, uh, is there anything else we need to know about uh 401ks and self-directed IRAs. How about checkbook control? How do we handle that? Yeah. So it's when you're, when you're making an investment in IRA, there's kind of a couple different ways you could do it. Um, a lot of clients simply, they, they go directly through us. Uh, if you're buying a piece of real estate, we handle the, help handle the closing. We 
Uh, once the investment's been made, we will receive and deposit the rents back into your account. Uh, you'll send us all the bills to be paid out of the account. We handle all of that activity as, as the administrator and record keeper of your account. So you don't necessarily need a separate property manager to handle that. You can direct all that activity uh, in and out of the account. Um, and, and, and we do that. Now, the other way to go, and we've had individuals do this as well, they call it checkbook control in the industry. Uh, it involves you setting up a separate entity, basically a separate LLC, that your IRA or your 401k plan then invests through. So rather than having Advanta process the new investment and purchase and handle all of your rents and income, you can direct us instead to send the cash of your, from your IRA into an LLC that you hold. Uh, the, the IRA is the sole member of the LLC. You act as manager and we send the cash from your IRA into that LLC bank account. And then from there, you as the manager can direct all the investment purchases in the name of the LLC, and you can receive the rents and deposit them to that LLC bank account, and then pay all the bills out of that account. So you're taking that administrative uh, duties away from us at Advanta. Now, we still are, are, are acting as a custodian holding the LLC, but it does give you more freedom and flexibility. We've seen people who are doing rehab projects, uh, buying properties at auctions, maybe you're doing a lot of uh, quick and short deals. Um, that the LLC makes more sense for you to have that flexibility, uh, pay less in fees as well. So uh, it's an option. Uh, you don't have to use a checkbook control. You can certainly make all your investments uh, through us here at Advanta. Uh, but it is an interesting option. I, you know, I, would, I would point people, if you want to learn more on that topic, certainly you can call me. I'll be happy to, to walk you through it on the phone. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube page and just type in Advanta IRA. We have a lot of educational webinars and seminars that we've done over the years on a variety of topics, a variety of different speakers, but there are some kind of core uh, webinars and recordings that we have that will tell you specifically uh, about the checkbook option. Oh, I love that. And I have one final question. It's kind of basically a, a, a scenario. So let's just say, I'll use me as an example. I have a million dollars sitting in a 401k account. What's the average opening for, what's the average someone opens an account with you guys for? Is it a typical hundred grand? Should I just send everything over or what's the average? What are you saying to people? Yeah. See, and that's, that's a great question, John. I think this illustrates kind of the diversity of, of what our clients do. So I think our average account size, if you took the average of all of the, the number of accounts we have and the total value, the average account size is in that $125,000 range. That includes clients who hold three or $4 million IRAs that have a litany of, of private mortgages held in their account. And we have people who start their IRA by putting five or six grand in as their annual contribution, and they go out and buy tax liens with it. So the, the good thing about a self-directed IRA is it's definitely not a, it's not a one size fits uh, all uh, model. It is you bring what you want to invest in, how much you want to invest, uh, and then we'll help you. So we have, again, a lot of clients who they have their IRA at a brokerage firm and they move over the cash. You know, if they want to put a hundred thousand into a syndication, they move over just a hundred thousand dollars make that investment into the syndication and leave the rest of their money uh, invested in, you know, other you know, mutual funds or stocks or whatever they had at that brokerage firm. So it is not an all or nothing proposition. You can move over just what you need to make the particular deal that you, you need. And if your, your self-directed IRA deal is completed and pays off and you want to move your cash back to where it came from, you're free to do so. It's not a, not a problem to transfer that money back out. There's no restriction on moving money back and forth between your IRAs. As long as you do it with the right paperwork each time, you can move money freely back and forth uh, in any amount that you wish. So again, our average account size might be 125 grand, but we have counts, account size anywhere from $1,000 to you know, four or $5 million that we're holding. Man, Scott, you've provided a ton of value for us today. Can I ask you where we can find you? Absolutely, you can visit us uh, at advantaira.com. Uh, that's our website, or you can reach me direct. I'll give you my direct line. Uh, it's area code 727-581-9853. And my direct extension uh, is 1123. So you hit that extension, you're getting me on the phone. Uh, or you can email me. It's my first initial S and my last name is Maurer, M-A-U-R-E-R, at advanceira.com. Uh, I'm, I'm available, and I want to make the point too that I'm always available for any type of call. If you have uh, an account with another self-directed custodian, you just can't get answers from them. Give me a call. I'll help you out. Um, if you have a, just a general IRA question, hey, I need to take a distribution. Uh, what are the taxes? What are the potential penalties? What am I looking at? 
um, give me a call. Or you know, I'm thinking about a SEP or a solo K. What are the contribution limits? How do those work? Give me a call. I'm happy to help out whether it's a, a specific self-directed question or not. That is awesome. If you guys, PI listeners, if you want to learn more, reach out to Scott. He's, he's awesome. I've talked to him countless times. So appreciate you coming on, Scott. Any last words? Yeah, no, John, appreciate you coming on again. I would just tell people again, as, as you're seeing the stock market go up and down, uh, just know that there are other options out there to look around. Um, and, you know, again, you have the ability, as we just as we talked about just that last question you asked, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can move a portion of it to really get that proper diversification and get that money working for you. Thank you again, Scott. Appreciate you. Stay safe, stay healthy. Everybody, thank you for listening to the next episode. PI listeners, I'm grateful for your time and I appreciate you for listening. For more information, go to PassiveInvestorShow.com. If any of this resonates with you, please subscribe and leave a review. The more you know, the more we grow. Thank you for tuning in. Till next time.